It's the place where senior living insights and entertainment collide, like two star-crossed lovers meeting at a polka dance. This is the Bellwether Senior Living Podcast, hosted by Jeff Bell of Bell PR and Marketing. Senior Living Marketers, put your hands together for the host with the most. Okay, maybe not, but he tries. Jeff Bell. Thanks as always, Tom. We are uh, back on another episode of the Bellwether Senior Living Podcast. I'm Jeff Bell, President and CEO of Bell PR and Marketing, and pretty excited about our conversation today on the podcast. We're going to focus on something that I personally, um, I don't think gets nearly enough attention in the world of senior living, and that is um, specifically the topic of affordable housing in senior living. And so we're excited about our guest who's going to talk through that. A couple of uh, quick housekeeping items first as we're wrapping up the year here. Uh, just a quick plug for our services. If you are a uh, senior living community, uh, marketing salesperson, CEO, et cetera, and you're listening to the podcast and you're maybe you're doing media relations and you're not happy with it or you're not doing media relations at all, highly recommend that you check out um, our proprietary offering, which is called News Power uh content marketing it's a totally different way of doing media relations and uh we don't feel like people get the bang for their buck when it comes to media coverage uh, we take it to a whole nother level bring it all the way through from the beginning which is earned media all the way through into your uh, sales pipeline so would love to tell you more about that and uh, everyone's budgeting for uh, 2023 and beyond. So uh, definitely consider that. Check it out, www.bellpr.org, www.bellpr.org. And now I am um, very excited, as I mentioned, um, about our guest today, who uh, is going to talk specifically about um, affordable housing. And I think it's uh, going to be a great conversation. And again, I think my, my, my general viewpoint is we don't talk about this enough. Uh, we love uh, selling senior living. It's a product that we believe in. Obviously, uh, at Bell, we have a ton of clients in the senior living sphere. But really, really specifically, we, uh, we don't talk enough about the affordable housing end of things. And um, with all the economic challenges we've had with, with COVID, uh, et cetera, it's a, it's a topic we need to discuss. So with that, we're going to bring in Joy Keels. Uh, she is the Vice President of Affordable Housing for uh, one of our clients uh, that we uh, love very much, Methodist Retirement Communities. And so we're going to bring Joy in here now. And uh, Joy, first of all, welcome to the Bellwether Senior Living Podcast. And uh, before we brought you in, just sort of gave everyone a heads up what we were going to be talking about today. Uh, and I said, I think it's a topic that it doesn't get enough um, attention, and that's the affordable housing end of senior living. Um, and you know, when I when I uh, talk to people about senior living, uh, there are just with 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 general senior living with CCRC, there is all sorts of misconceptions out there. Let alone when we talk about affordable housing, there may be people who don't even know that that's an offering in senior living, and um, not everyone does offer it. Uh, but Methodist Retirement Communities absolutely does. That's where you come in. Uh, so tell me first, just uh, so our podcast listeners get an idea, tell me a little bit about your role and what does that look like? And also tell me just a little bit about, about some of the affordable housing offerings that MRC has. Okay, thank you for inviting me and um, on this podcast, Jeff, uh, also to talk about something that's very passionate to my heart. Um, I am the vice president of Methodist Retirement Communities Affordable Housing, and I've been with the organization now for 14 years. We have five properties that serve 319 seniors that are on a low fixed income, and we have three in LaPorte, Texas, no, excuse me, two in LaPorte, Texas, and three in Bryan. And uh, we also serve, if you're under the age of 62, um, we do serve um, a handful of those residents as well too, but they uh, have to be on disability to be able to, to be here, so. 
And so specifically, what is what is your day to day look like as vice president of affordable housing for a senior living organization? Uh, what what kinds of things are you responsible for? And, and what does your um, day to day look like? I would imagine it's probably two days are never the same. Oh, no, um, I'm very hands on too with uh, in all five of my properties with not with my staff and with the residents in, as well. I have an open door policy. So these residents will come in and talk with me anytime they want. They also text me all the time. Um, yeah, no two days are the same. I try to help and be there for my staff if they're needing help with uh, uh, qualifying uh, an applicant for one of our properties. Or they also, the residents have to be recertified every year which consists of a lot of paperwork once again. And with HUD, nothing is easy. It's always lots and lots of paperwork. And so I'm here for that too. I help them with that. But I'm also in the process of trying to refinance our properties so we can do some rehabbing on our properties as well too to maintain um the quality of living that these residents have with uh, Methodist retirement communities, just because they're in low income housing, per se, or affordable housing, we still want it to look extremely nice as well, too. So, and, and to clarify for someone who's listening, who just maybe doesn't know much about this, or, or, or even if they do, we're talking specifically uh, th this is part of housing and urban development at the federal level in terms of where the funding comes from. I think a lot of people hear HUD or housing and urban development, and maybe they don't think as far as this is an, a senior living type of a, an impact where some of these dollars go. No, that a lot of uh, people don't, including myself, before I came on board with MRC, didn't even know properties like this existed for seniors on a fixed income had no idea. And, uh, and a lot of, and I hate to say this, but a lot of times people hear HUD and you think of it as maybe low income for family, for families or single moms or dads or whatever, but it's not that at all. Um, these are really nice retirement communities for these senior adults. And uh, so, um, and a lot of people don't know they're here at all, or that there's even uh, this possibility out here for their for the seniors. You know, if you're looking, if you're a child of a senior adult and you're looking for a, a place for your parent to go to, look at affordable housing within the HUD, in, HUD industry out there. You're gonna find a lot of really nice communities. Do you have people who come to you and maybe because of some of the, the things that come to mind when people hear HUD or affordable housing uh, that are just, um, maybe they, they just don't know what to expect when they come through the door? And how do you, how do you help them understand that this is a, a nice place for mom or dad? It's a safe place for mom or dad. It is, um, it's there to help, it's there to be a resource. How, how do you have those conversations? And we are there to serve it all. We um, also serve the residents by connecting them with outside resources um, to uh, help them age in place better as well too. Maybe a care provider that needs to come in and help them as they aged in place. We give um, anybody who walks through the door that wants a tour of our communities, um, we'll take them around all of our communities and let them see them. Hopefully they can go into um, a unit or an apartment to see the layout of the apartments. We have on-site food pantries, a lot of, to help them there too, because sometimes they, sometimes they come to us and don't even have any food. Uh, we also serve the homeless. And so um, we have a homeless preference with the with HUD as well too. So, um, and they don't come to us with furniture, food or anything. So we also get out there and try and find furniture to at least a couch, a bed, the basics for them as well too. Um, we provide transportation to and from doctor's visits. We provide social events and wellness seminars. 
in, in all of the communities throughout the um, HUD, they also do a lot of what we are doing. It's not necessarily just centered to our properties that we have within MRC. It's out there in all of the properties. You'll see this as well. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. We, we also um, solicit donations from um, other organizations too to help keep our food pantry stocked and to provide the social wellness, social activities and wellness seminars. Um, because with HUD, they want them to age in place in your community, but we can have a budget for those type things as well too, because HUD's in that business for housing. So I understand that. So we're looking for outside resources as well. Um, but we'll get them um, like a, a free phone sometimes for that. Um, utility assistance to help them pay their uh, electrical bill. The list goes on and on. And just to be there as a family. We are their extended family. And, um, and so we're there for when they need to come to us and just have a shoulder to, to lean on or, you know, just to hear what they're having to tell us, you know, talk about, you know, their great, their grandchildren, their great grandchildren, and even their great, great grandchildren. We hear all of the stories. So we're here for them as their family. So um, we do it all, you know, just everything you would anticipate when your loved one moves into a retirement community. That's what we serve here as well too, in affordable housing. And I've had the pleasure since uh, MRC is a PR client of ours, I've had the pleasure of getting to know some of these residents um, who make use of the affordable housing offering. Yeah. And you know, to, to, to your point, they are um, just like anybody else. They're, they're proud of their families. They're, pr they're proud of uh, some of their accomplishments in life. Some of them have amazing backstories. And um, I think that it also shines a light on, and maybe you can speak to this a little bit, the Christian service mission of an organization like MRC, because obviously uh, there, are, there, there is a Christian service aspect of elder care, regardless of income level or, or the type of community. But I would imagine that there's a real heart feeling uh, of, of, of meeting that Christian service level when it comes to affordable housing. Being faith-based, absolutely. We provide, um, I have three pastors on staff in my um, communities and we, they hold Bible studies, um, prayer and worship all the time with our residents. And it means so much to them because if they're in need and need in a prayer, they don't hesitate coming to us and saying, can you pray with us? And we do that a lot. And we open all of our meetings with um, the residents and with staff. And even when we're out to lunch or anything like that, we open with prayer um, because we all need that. And I think being faith-based says a lot about us. And um, even one of our residents here in our Unity um, community is a pastor. And he goes to the three different communities here and does Bible study and Sunday worship with them. And so when these residents can't get out to the church that they're used to going to, we're providing those services here on campus for them. And, and, and go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, I was just going to say, and speaking of a resident like that, because we talked about offerings for the homeless and, and for people who really are truly down on their luck. But that's not the full scope of affordable housing. A lot of these folks are, uh, they've had great careers. They, they, are, they are people who have, uh, who have had really fascinating lives. They've had great careers. They've been everything from pastors to uh, postmen to, to firefighters, you name it. And, and so touch on, touch on that a little bit. There's a lot of diversity. In the oh, there is a lot of diversity in, um, in our communities. We have train conductors on here. Uh, we have uh, university professors. We have one resident in our um, community down in Laporte who went to Madagascar during his younger years to build churches. 
and was not able to, you know, to plan for his retirement on his low income. And he said, but what a blessing it is to have an organization like MRC that is faith-based and then I'm a, and it's a nice community and I'm able to retire here on the income that I have. But I feel good about what I did when I was young and now he's still doing his mission. And so he also teaches Bible school and does worship too at our communities in Laporte. So, but um, we have had, like you said, teachers, um, police officers. We have um, one of our residents here in U uh, Unity won the Jefferson Award here in, um, um, in Bryan College Station, which is also, uh, you know, if you win it for your community, then you go on to DC and you can also win it nationally, right? She won it for all of her volunteer work. And one of the major hospitals here in town um, sent in her application. They submitted her to win this Jefferson Award. So, you know, what a, an honor to have in a recipient of a Jefferson Award living here. They're not just living in the you know, I hate to say it, the fancy independent living, because I think we're pretty fancy. So, um, but it, it's all walks of life and all Hispanics, you know, whites, African-Americans, Asians, um, Puerto Ricans, we have it all. So big culture here, lots of culture. And you mentioned D.C., which kind of piggybacks onto my next question, because we know, uh, you know, it's no secret that when you're depending on Medicare, when you're depending on Medicaid, when you're depending on um, funding from housing and urban development, whatever it is, when there's a connection with the federal government, there is, I, I'm sure, a healthy amount of, I don't want to use the word lobbying because that's kind of a bad word these days in DC <laughs> circle, but, 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 a, but a level of, um, you know, spending some time in Washington as yeah. well and making sure that the voices of these individuals are heard. And I know you've had the pleasure to do some of that. Absolutely. I belong to an organization um, called NAMA, National Affordable Housing Management Association. And I go, usually go to Washington, D.C. twice a year in the spring and in the fall. And well, because of, you know, the virus, I was not able to go for a while. But while we were there, we would go advocate for our seniors at, you know, at the Hill. I have walked them halls many of times, visiting senators and congressmen, you know, telling them what, how important it is to have had fund more properties like this for our senior adults. Um, we've also had one of our congressmen come to our community. And, and this is a good example of people not knowing that these properties are out here or out there. Um, he, come, he goes, you know, I've been out to Crestview several times, several times had no idea that they had affordable housing out here, you know, right, right in their backyard. And he said, these are nice communities. And I said, that's right. And I said, we need you to vote for more funding, you know, when it comes to time to vote on the, okay. um, the next bills and stuff. We need this funding for these properties to continue it. And with the baby boomers coming up, the need is there more so it's it's really our, our Laporte communities probably have a 50 um person wait list but you get into the bigger cities like Houston and uh, you know all those Dallas Fort Worth all those Atlanta all those big cities you're looking at a 500 person wait list it's major and so we, it's definitely, if you're in D.C. or you know your congressman and senator, get out there and tell them, please vote to fund these properties and to fund to building more. And, and what can be done, obviously, a part of it is, is funding. Um, what can we do? And certainly, I think this podcast and getting this information out yeah. there is probably part of it. What can we do to, to convince or entice other senior living providers who maybe aren't in 
the affordable housing marketplace to consider it to do to 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 do what MRC um, does, take it to yeah. another level. Well, you know, I think it's just they probably don't know we exist either, right? And I think it's just us getting out there and inviting them to our communities to see what we offer and um, to see what they can do to, you know, to build it, hopefully build a new one. Or even you can sometimes turn an existing property into an affordable housing property. You just got to, you know, send the applications into HUD and get it approved. But, you know, just getting the word out there, I think, Jeff, is the biggest thing, you know, inviting people to your communities and letting them see what we have, what you have to offer. Because I think uh, every time someone comes into our communities that don't know we are here, whether it's in the Bryan or the LaFort locations, they're amazed. They're amazed at how wonderful these communities are and how much that we offer to our senior adults here. So if there's someone out there who thinks they may qualify for this or they've got a parent or a loved one who may qualify for this, what, what is the next step, whether they're listening in Texas where you are or they're listening in New Hampshire? What, what can they do to find out, number one, am I qualified for this? What can they do to find out if there's affordable senior housing near them? What are, what are next steps people can take? Well, I think one of the next steps is to get on Google and you know, just Google affordable housing in your area. Um, then contact that community and they will walk you through the steps as far as um, you know what the income limits are because there are income limits um, for each um, each state, each county has a different income limit. So it's to figure that out to see if they qualify for their income and then fill out that application and bring it in and let the communities process it and then um, let them tell you, okay, you're on the wait list. And you know, this is, could be how long it may be that you're gonna be on the wait list. And I would do it now and not later because of the wait list. If you're even thinking about it and your parent is like, or someone that you know needs it, because it doesn't necessarily have to be a child looking. We've had all kinds of people come in looking, maybe a care, a care provider, a doctor, has also come in and um, have uh, you know brought a, a senior adult to us as well, but it's better to get it done now because if they're giving you a hard time now thinking, no, I'm going into a nursing home, not a nursing home, it's still independent living. Maybe by the time their name comes up on the wait list, they're ready to go. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they, okay, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to go. Yeah, it's not, may not be their big comfy home, but once they get in here and make their apartment their home and not an apartment and see what the community life is about, because socialization is a big, big thing in senior adults. They uh, stay in those homes and don't get out and don't do much you know, or people may not come over. They're not in the same town as their family members are. So when you're in a community like we offer, that's family. So socialization and loneliness is a big thing with, um, with the senior adults, and especially what we just went through with the pandemic, all the loneliness and Absolutely. With that. That's a big thing with them. Well, Joy, we we are very thankful that you took time to join us on the on the podcast today. Where can people go to learn specifically more about affordable housing and MRC? Is there a website that they can go to or a phone number they can call? They can go to the the MRC website. It's mrc.com or .org, I think is the website. You can go there and look us up. You can go to the HUD website and look at, and they probably will have a list of all of the different communities. Too there, there's a good place to start as well too. But yeah, go to Mr. Cap and look us up and um, come see us. We are we're very proud, and we would love to give anyone a tour and tell us tell them your, our story as well. Yeah, I just pulled it up. MRCAFF.org. org. Mrcaff org. So check it out. And uh, obviously, www.bellpr.org is how you get in touch with us. 
And uh, certainly you can give us a call if you hear this podcast, have any questions, and we will help you to get uh, plugged in uh, where you need to get plugged in. So again, Joy Kills, VP of Affordable Housing for MRC. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining the Bellwether Podcast. For Tom Watts and producer engineer Julie Montoya Houston, I'm CEO Jeff Bell, reminding you to never follow be a bellwether. Oh, my God.